Hey guys, welcome back to This Side Up and Up. In light of the events two weeks ago, I think, about the US elections mm -hmm. and how so much racial rhetoric was like thrown around. Yeah, especially even after that, like there was all those yeah. incidents, racist incidents and yeah, all that. Yeah, hate crimes, hate crimes. Mm -hmm. We decided to talk about racism today. We have some special guests with us. Hi, I'm Zatus and I'm from Malaysia. Hi, I'm Ashi from Sri Lanka. Hello, I'm Sarin from Malaysia. Just to get the ball rolling, how about we just talk a bit about like your own personal experiences with racism, whether like in Malaysia or in your own countries or even when you go overseas? The most obvious like experience would be in the UK where, well, as you can see, I wear hijab, so... Mm -hmm. And I walked around. Well, some of them are fine, but some of them, in the subways, in the metros, or in in all public transports, you were bound to see looks, and you can see there's really? kind of uh, discomfort in their looks. Were you in London? London, the big not, no, not the big cities. Okay. More to the suburbs like Brighton's. Right. The big cities are fine because they're used to it. Because mm -hmm. I mean, like they have Arabs and Pakistanis right. who are always around, so they're used to it. Yeah, I, I could relate to that because being in Malaysia for most of my life, I've never really noticed. Like I've never really seen myself as an other. Going to the UK as well, I really felt like I was the minority. It was very obvious there. I guess it made me more alert to how differently people might perceive me. There I got a lot of people coming up to me on the street and saying Ni hao and I wasn't sure whether like was I supposed to take that in a friendly manner or was I supposed to be offended? I really didn't know. Well similarly, I people think I'm Malaysian Indian mm -hmm. and they speak to me in Malay and I had to keep saying no, not from here. Okay. <laughs> Quite a number of times so they have to get yeah. it. I, I don't take it in a racist mm -hmm. way though. Just I ha actually, actually do have a lot of personal experiences in Malaysia experiencing like outright racism. So I came from a, I mean in Malay we call it a sekolah kebangsaan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the people I mixed with, I mixed with like the Indians, the Malays, the Chinese and everyone was fine with each other. There was no like forms of racism and things like that. But the moment I stepped into secondary school, that's when I was exposed to like, um, uh, no offence, but I was I met a lot of Chinese students from Chinese primary schools mm -hmm. and the first thing they would tell me is why are you black? This uh, reminds me of the line from Mean Girls by the way. So if you're from Africa, why are you white? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they would come up to me like they wouldn't they, they wouldn't disguise it or anything. Mm -hmm. They just like go up to me and say, Why are you so black? What and like when I first experienced it, it really hurt. And I would get so upset. And things that like I I hated school, but somehow it's not a good thing. But I I got used to it. So when you would come up to me and say, "Why are you black?" I would be like, "Oh, it happens. Oh, that's how I was born." So it's not a good thing that I become desensitized. But I'm speaking from experience. I mean, it's really sad to hear that such things happen even in a country that prides itself in being multiracial, but. I think it's partly due to the fact that those students, they uh, grew up in an environment where it's very monoculture. I come from a uh, Chinese primary school as well. So like going into also Kabansan in secondary school. So it's kind of like after that, everyone else kind of just grouped up with uh, yeah, like, just yeah. based on races. Like, you know, the Indians hang out with Indians. Basically like, what you see on campus. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's I mean, it's understandable. You know, you, you kind of like, kind of come up with people who are more similar to you. But the thing is, is that uh, back in sen secondary school, there are, you know, there are like teenagers, people get into fights and everything. And like, oh, I, I argue with a lot of people. I, I'm guilty of it. I'm, you I'm argue? Sure. You don't look like that type. <laughs> That's a bird. <laughs> but yeah, uh, got into fights and stuff like that with like other races and it's just now, now that I think it back, it's like, why did I do that? It's just so weird. What do you guys think about, for example, jokes? Like, people will post stuff on the internet that are potentially offensive, and then when people comment saying like, hey, that's racist, you shouldn't say things like that, and then they'll pass it off as a joke. Where do you think we draw the line between racist and not racist? Well, I think if you were to make a comment on social media mm -hmm. that is 
going to definitely stir up emotions. You have to understand that if whatever you're posting can be um, assumed as being racist, then you have to understand that you can't just pass it off as a joke. Whatever you're posting is going to be on the internet. And you should know better than to just make racy statements and then just say, oh no, that's a joke. Yeah. Because it doesn't work that way. To me, what I believe in, in drawing the line between a joke and just blatant racism is your audience. Like if you look at comedians, they more often than not, they make jokes about stereotypes, races. Their audience, they know that they that they are attending that show and these such jokes of this nature will be brought up. Mm. And yeah, Russell Peters. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect example. <laughs> and his audience, they know that he's going to make such jokes mm. and they're fine with it. But then if you're going to put something out on the internet and say, make a racist statement, then you say, you can't just say, oh, that's a joke. Because it's also yeah. read in a different way. You don't know the tone of the it's, person writing it. I think it depends on the yeah. delivery of the joke. Depends on the audience, but it so depends on yourself. I mean, like how you portray yourself in the society. If you're the type of, I mean, you yourself know like how you think of things. I'm sure you yourself know whether you are, you are. Do you have a certain prejudice towards a certain race? So if you if you know that and you make a joke about that, then it's racist. There's something to be said about a statement or a joke that's offensive. Or like, for someone to be, for something to be offensive, or to offend of someone in particular, kind of like, is it really offensive, or is it just offending you yourself? But that's the thing about it. It's like everyone sees that differently as well. I come from a like in sekolah menengah kebangsaan. My school was the type like we mix around with each other. Even mm -hmm. at canteens, we don't have that separation between Malays and Indians. Mm -hmm. We we sit together. Sorry, we sat together and we mix around. So I came from that background. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm still in the same kind of background. So when I post stuff on Instagram, like I post a picture with my Chinese friend, mm -hmm. and I say my favorite Apek friend. So uh, I mean, like some people might take it as a as a it's oh that's racist. Why why is it because he's Chinese you call him Apek? But then he's my friend and he's fine with me talking about him that way. Audience and yourself, it goes both ways. In a twisted kind of way, people make racist jokes to feel like they belong. In like the Malaysian context, when we are fine with each other and things like that, when you're yeah. comfortable enough with someone of a different race, <laughs> you feel like you can make racist jokes with them and they would like do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. You feel like, oh no, it's fine. It's just, you know, we're just, it's just banter. Mm -hmm. But then uh, you would know that you can't do that things with a person you, that you're not familiar with. Mm -hmm. I True. think that's how it works. I think like being racist or being not racist, it's not about like not seeing race as in, I mean, it's easy to say that you see everyone as the same, but it's also something we have to acknowledge that, I mean, race is something that exists and different cultures do exist. So I think not being racist is not about ignoring all that, but acknowledging it, but not using it in a negative sense. Connotation. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm going to admit, I make a lot of racist jokes, yeah, <laughs> but I do, not, I do not in any way condone racism. So I, I guess yeah. that applies to all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Like we make yeah, jokes, and then, but yeah. we speak out against racism. Yeah. True. We are always talking about like racist jokes between like two different races. Mm -hmm. There's also racism between the same race. Same. Yes. 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 That is true. Like Malays with Malays. Like for example, I, like I mentioned before, I was from a background that is which is which is mixed and mm -hmm. integrated. So when the Malays who are always with themselves, they this when I come to them, they see me as like an outsider. Like why are you hanging out with them? Mm -hmm. And like. Why are you not hanging out with us? So like I don't see why there need to be the us and us and them mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. It's really funny because like you want to stand up for mm -hmm. your race or whatever that's what's happening back home, but at the same time your own race has its own races. Yeah. For example, like the northern Tamils mm -hmm. would like mingling with the southern, oh, uh, not okay. southern hill country Tamils, and that way the Kandyan Sinhalese don't even are not too cool with like marrying someone from Colombo even oh, though they're okay. Sinhalese. I found this out recently. I thought it was like a past thing and like just talk. But it still goes on today. Yeah, I've actually like met right. people whose parents don't approve of right. their relationship because he's not candy when I met the Sinhalese. <laughs> I even get statements like, Are you trying to be cool being friends with them? I'm like oh, wow. seriously yeah. guys. <laughs> yeah, like I've known friends who um, their parents don't speak Chinese, 
I mean, they are ethnically Chinese, but their parents don't speak Chinese, so and they didn't go to a Chinese primary school, so they, they grew up bananas. not speaking Chinese. Yeah, it's like we call them bananas. Uh, if you guys don't know, it's because like it refers to how you're yellow skin on the outside, but you're white on the inside. Okay, even though we use that term as a joke most of the time, but then I think it there's this implication like it implies that they're not Chinese enough, or like they'll say that um, oh why do you speak English? Are you trying to be white, or are you trying to prove that you're better than all of us kind of thing? Yeah. But does that count as racism though? Racism would generally mean that. The, it's the belief that one race is better than the other mm-hmm. or like a race should be treated this way because of how they are and things like that. But speaking of this discrimination within a race, mm-hmm. is that racism? What do you think or does it just fall into the category of discrimination and you know ignorance and things like that? I think it. I think it would. I feel it is racism. I think it's similar because it's in, in a way it, it is still the us between them. It's like. We speak Chinese, yeah, but we they don't. So it's like a, a us and them yeah. situation again, which has ties in with racism, but might not necessarily be. I will say so. Because like yeah. in the Indian community, mm-hmm. it's very difficult to define racism because Indians in general are made up of different races. Different. Sure. I, don't yeah. know, I think counted as races or ethnicities. Ethnicities. Right? Right? Like you have the Tamils, yeah. you have the and, oh. and all the other. Discrimination exists within these different groups yeah. of Indians as well. Right. Probably a Tamil family wouldn't allow their children to marry someone from a Malayalam family and things like that. I guess racism might be loosely defined in this case. So like so then it relates back to what you guys are saying in the us versus them kind of scenarios. I have a friend back home who always like make comments like, Oh, this guy damn China, but he's a Chinese. <laughs> like when when you encounter that, I mean, like is that racist? There's a spectrum to it. You're like thirty percent Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Is it considered racism or not? Comment down below. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of like um, Chinese households, they grew up with the idea that if you were to misbehave, the Indian uncle will kidnap you. <laughs> Wait, a lot of my friends have told me this. Like, yes, it's true. It's true, yeah. It's true. 